Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. Now, before we get into today's video, very special video today, and I'm not gonna do wristwatch check just yet because I have bought a new piece to celebrate, well, we've reached 100,000 uh, subscribers, so what else, am I, what else am I gonna buy? I'm gonna buy a watch. So if you recall last week, I asked you guys what I should call my new stag there, um, and somebody, and I, I don't know who, I forget, but I do apologize. If you're watching this, please do comment down below so I can thank you properly and send you a little gift. Somebody came up with the genius idea of calling it Hans in honor of Hans Wildorf, of course, the founder of Rolex and Tudor. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a huge uh, fan of both brands. Uh, so Hans it is. So now we have Hugo <laughs> and Hans. <laughs> Naming done. Let's roll the intro and get into today's video. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Very special episode today. We've reached 100,000 subscribers. I, I can't believe it. It's a little bit surreal, really. Um, just staggering. I, I mean, who would have thought it? I, you know, when I started this channel, I had no intention. I mean, I did it just for fun. Uh, it's only really in the last couple of years that it's got kind of a little bit more serious. What I'm especially pleased about is next month will be the 30th anniversary. It will be May 4th. It happens to be <laughs> Star Wars Day. I, I started the channel on May 4th three years ago next month. So it's really, really cool that we've reached this, this uh, milestone um, ahead of the 30th anniversary. I, I just can't believe it. And a massive, massive thank you to every each one of you. I mean, I can't do it without you. Um, the admins, the friends I've made along the way, the sense of community. It's just fantastic. I, there's, there's this real feeling of, of, of almost like family, of, of people I've, I've, I've become um, lifelong friends with. And this kind of sense of belonging, you know, because guys, I mean, I'm no guru. I'm, I will never claim to be um, I'm just a person that loves watches. I'm, I'm, I, I like the term enthusiast. I've said this before. That kind of encapsulates perfectly my feeling towards watches. I'm enthusiastic about them. It's a real passion for me. I love them. I love talking about them. I don't know everything about them. And I think actually that's part of why there is such a strong community with the channel is because People relate to that. I don't claim to know everything. I don't know everything. I, I love the history of horology. I've always been fascinated by history. I always loved uh, wristwatches. It's a journey. I feel like we're there together. You know, when I'm visiting stores or learning about new watches or I get something in to review, people can relate to that excitement. You know, it's, it's, it's a real relationship and, and I feel that. And I'm gonna keep on doing it. I'm gonna keep on learning and, and, and discovering new brands and new watches. It's, 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 I'm just very, very optimistic. I'm also deeply flattered that there's so many of you out there that enjoy this. Um, this wonderful, wonderful hobby. The, the learning never stops. The wonder never stops. I'm very, very excited. And, you know, three years in, we're still independent. We're not um, any kind of corporate. I mean, it's just little old me, uh, you know, <laughs> struggling to get the editing and everything done on time. But it's, it's a labor of love. I love doing it. I, I'm really... Uh, enjoying even learning about the technical aspect you know because when I started this I had a uh, where is the camera it's not here but um, it's in another room but it's, it was just me and a, and a very uh, cheap camera I've got on eBay just you know looking at watches I liked and talking about things I like that's all it is I mean it really hasn't changed much you know so and I think I will always uh, try to stay faithful 
to that. Um, you know, at fundamentally, that is the core of, of the channel, just sharing things I love. Um, so it's not going to change. It's never going to change. But stay tuned. On May 4th, I will be doing a special episode uh, to commemorate the anniversary of the channel. Uh, I'm, I am chuffed. I, I, I got to admit, I, I am happy that we've reached this amount of subscribers before the anniversary. It's kind of poetic timing. Um, so yeah, very, very happy about that. So what are we gonna talk about today? Well, I have indeed bought a new watch. It is my wristwatch check for today. And you're probably thinking, well, hold on a moment. Isn't that your $30 Timex? Well, it is and it isn't. This actually is a very, very similar piece. Now what happened was, somebody actually emailed me and gave me an offer I couldn't refuse. I mean, just a, a, a really, I mean, I'd be an idiot to turn it down. Uh, they wanted that, that Timex I had, they gave me a price and I said, okay, fine. However, at the same time, I, I'm still actively searching for more of them because they are the best used vintage watch you can buy for under $50. I actually picked this one up in a bargain at the same time as this deal was going through. So knowing that this one was on the way, I, I was fine with selling the other one because it is very dear to my heart. If you're familiar with this watch, this is a classic Merlin from the 60s. These were actually manufactured. Now you have to check with the reference number, but these particular, um, it depends. Some were manufactured in the United States, some in Asia. If you check the numbers, you can find out, like this one, it was made in the United Kingdom in the Dundee factory. Now, of course, it is closed down. Now. I think it closed in, uh, in early 90s. They opened in 46, 1946. So most likely, especially in the 60s, these 60s Merlins, they were made predominantly most of them in the United Kingdom. So, you know, it holds a special place in my heart. Of course, I want to watch in my collection that was made in the motherland, so to speak. Now, the fact that they're not made anymore, that they were made in the United Kingdom, uh, and they are, I mean, I mean, just look at it. It's absolutely stunning. It has an understated class and elegance to it that is just undeniable. I mean, it, it, it very reminiscent of some, dare I say it, some Hort Horology brand uh, dress watches. It has that kind of vibe about it. But of course, I mean, obviously it's a totally different animal, but we'll get into that in just a second. They're not gonna be around forever. They're, they're eventually you're not gonna find them and yeah, the price is gonna go up. You know, the price is undoubtedly gonna go up because you're gonna find it harder to find them, first of all. Secondly, to find one in good working order. This one keeps impeccably good time. And I really do think Timex has a vastly underrated, underappreciated horological heritage to them. I mean, the list of achievements founded in 1854. And part of the reason why they're just so robust is because in the 50s, they actually pioneered a technology they replaced the jewels in the movement of the watch with a, a special alloy they developed. Timex actually got uh, contracts to work on uh, military technology, uh, missile defense systems, this kind of stuff. They, they, they provided some of the mechanisms in, um, in what was it? Um, ah, here we are, fuses, gyros, guidance subsystems, um, various miniature uh, and sub-miniature precision items, apparently. So inside this movement is some of that technology. So that's why the 60s for me really is the best period. Also, aesthetically, it's got to be said, I mean, beautiful, dazzling, radiant. Just look at that champagne dial. Uh, really just makes it worth every single penny. Reminiscent of some kind of higher-end dress watches that beautiful applied 12, three, six, and nine. The scale of it, the thinness of it, I mean, it's barely a centimeter tall. It is, of course, an acrylic domed crystal. Even though the movement is very, very rudimentary, I mean, it's probably the most utilitarian movement in terms of its looks of all time. I mean, it's, it's quite, it's quite, it's not a pretty sight. However, it's built like an absolute tank. Now, at this time, Timex actually was the largest manufacturer 
of wristwatches in the world. I don't think they have that title any longer. It'll be interesting to find out who does. And their slogan was, it takes a licking, but it keeps on ticking. So it's, it's quite ironic that such a, um, a modestly sized, very elegant, it's got to be said, it looks absolutely class. I mean, it really is pure class in terms of its looks. But underneath that fa pretty facade is, is a real tough, hard as nails movement. Anyway, guys, I do recommend having a look at their Wikipedia page. Their history is very impressive. They're going strong. They are one of my eight brands. I get constantly asked, especially by young people, what are the best brands to get into horology, to get into watches? And they're definitely in my top eight. Tissot, Hamilton, Seiko, Citizen, Orient, Timex, Casio, and Swatch. Uh, that is my eight, the gateway uh, watch brands. Anywhere from $50 into the hundreds, those brands, they all have incredible history, incredible uh, list of achievements, innovation. Um, those are the gateway uh, watch brands and I'm proud that Timex is in there. But it has to be said, in terms of vintage, they're very, very hard to beat, as you can see by this one. Now I have got it on a NATO strap. I've, I've ordered a Hirsch lizard grain black. I think it will really suit the little, the black detail in the uh, applied indices there. So I'm very much looking forward to that. The only downside is it is a steel capped case. The case back is uh, entirely stainless steel. So there is a little bit of wear and tear, but I think it adds to its charm. I won this in an auction for $49.99. Not as a good deal as my previous one, which I think I won for 30 bucks. Uh, but still, the fact that they're not making them anymore, the fact that it's made in the United Kingdom, uh, it's elegant, it's, it's robust, it's beautiful, it's hard to beat. So they are definitely the best used vintage watch you can get under $50. It's going to be a keep in my collection. I know I, I didn't intend to sell the other one, but I do prefer this one a little bit more. It's slightly thinner because it's only a manual wind, it's not the automatic. So you don't have to have that rotor in there making the case a little bit thinner. Uh, also, I love the addition of the 3 and 9. Uh, the one I had previous just had 12 and 6. Do have a look on eBay, try and pick them up. That is my recommendation. You're not going to find a, a watch with as much heritage, uh, with as much elegance uh, and a mechanical, I mean true mechanical, a piece of a real watch making made in the United Kingdom. I mean it doesn't really get much better for 50 but under 50 bucks. Um, so over the moon, I gotta say remarkably well made. They certainly don't make watches like this anymore. Um, now you can tell the date of the year if you if you look at the number just under the six o'clock, the last two digits, so this is 68, which indicates it was made in 1968. I have researched this particular reference number, so definitely made in Dundee, so that just makes it all the sweeter. The only downsides of this is, of course, it's it's not, um, I mean, it says waterproof. This was obviously before the legality of it had to change because waterproof is a little bit misleading, but yeah, it's, it's not, I wouldn't wash the dishes or anything like that with it. Also, the loom, on those beautiful, very, very slim, kind of, not really sword hands, but anyway, the loom is gone. The loom at some of the markers is, is kind of fading at uh, right at the edge of the dial there. But look at the way the dial curves as well. It's got a beautiful curvature. For me, 34 millimeters, absolute perfect fit. Uh, it's, it's too small for some people, but do have a look. You can find the, the jumbo, sized Timexes uh, also from this era. There are some later 70s ones with those very 70s style cases. Those are a little bit bigger. But yeah, I, I ch just chuffed a bit. And I've got to say, it's got a really nice tick to it. It sounds, it actually, it sounds like an old clock. You know, it's got a very tick, tick, tick. I doubt the vibrations uh, per hour are, are that high. I mean, especially looking at the way they're but you know what? That's great. Less vibration on the moving parts. It's going to last longer. And again, probably why it's still ticking away. What was the slogan? What was the slogan? They take a licking, but...
keeps on ticking. I mean, yeah. Do have a look on eBay. And guys, uh, if you're not familiar with eBay, a little bit, perhaps you're a little bit trepidatious about um, going on eBay, and you should. There are some horrendous franking watches out there. There is some shady dealers as well. Check out my video. I'll put a link up there. 10 questions to ask before you, you purchase, things to look out for. I've done numerous videos on watch hunting on eBay. So have a look at those as well. But I'll, I'll add the 10 questions video. So just click on that link. It can be a bit of a minefield. However, the good thing is uh, you can still pick up bargains like this. So I'm gonna leave it there. Um, Massive thank you to everyone subscribing. Stay tuned for the special on May 4th. Uh, May the 4th be with you uh, <laughs> for the special on the anniversary. A, a very special video I've got planned. Regular programming. I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to be back on Saturday with another video. So, yes, yeah, stay tuned for that as well. Thoughts, queries, questions, opinions, all the rest of it, please, down below. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.